today on Christian World News. Suffering in Sudan. Military attacks on civilians force tens of thousands to flee. Why this famous face is joining others in a call for action. Plus, the gangster and the missionary. A Brazilian gang leader finds salvation just days before his death. Thanks to the Christian pastor who daily risks his life to share the gospel in Rio's most dangerous slums. And hope floats. Japanese fishermen lost their livelihoods when the tsunami swept their boats away. How a Christian ministry is helping them get back on the water. Welcome everyone to Christian World News. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm Mark Martin. George Thomas is on assignment. Ethnic cleansing, mass murder, and rape. It's something the people of Sudan face every day. The Islamic regime in the north continues its assault on the Nuba Mountains, home to one of the largest Christian communities. Now a U.S. lawmaker is asking the Obama administration to intervene. John Wagi has that story. More than 25,000 refugees are living in Camp Yida, just 20 miles south of the Sudan border. They have fled the fighting in the nearby Nuba Mountains, where the armed forces of President Omar Bashir are terrorizing people with daily airstrikes and house-to-house -house raids. This refugee says she lived in fear as bombs flew over her family's head every day. <laughs> Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf is a longtime advocate for Sudan. He recently visited the refugee camp, which is run by the Christian relief organization Samaritan's Purse. He is the first member of Congress to visit the camp in Yida. When he returned to the U.S., he held a press conference to make a plea for help. The world should be outraged. This administration should be outraged. And, and uh, if it's happening in southern Europe or, or, or southern Africa or southern Sudan, there ought to be a similar parallel. Uh, the, the value of people are the same there. Franklin Graham says the attacks could escalate into a full-blown war. He told CBN News that the international community should establish a no-fly zone over the region and the Obama administration should work to broker a peace deal. And you have to have somebody who's willing to take the leadership for peace. Uh, yes, war will break out. Uh, but I think the United States, I think President Obama has a, an excellent opportunity uh, to bring all these sides together uh, and, and hammer out a peace accord. Wolf said what refugees need most right now is food, and if they don't get it, they could be facing a severe famine. He said Bashir and his forces have denied access to food and humanitarian aid. Tom Andrews, with the organization United to End Genocide, also called on the U.S. to intervene. When you have half a million people facing starvation, then the President of the United States and the Secretary of State have to personally stand up and call upon him to lift this blockade. The blockade didn't stop CBN's Operation Blessing last summer from taking a team into the Nubas. When he heard about the extreme shortages of medicine there, President Bill Horan put together an emergency relief mission. The team brought in medicine and other medical supplies, enough to set up a temporary clinic. Horan also saw firsthand the brutality of the Khartoum regime. A school was actually targeted, a school that was filled with children in school, in session. Two huge bombs, thank God they missed, but not by much. Two giant craters in the soil, but it was close enough to the school that some shrapnel fell and penetrated the walls of some of the school buildings one child was killed and a whole group of children were injured. Who in the world would target, on purpose, children? Bashir is an indicted war criminal for genocide in Darfur. He also remains on the list of state sponsors of terrorism. Bashir needs to be brought to justice. No American tax dollars should be going to any country that welcomes Bashir, period. Absolutely, positively, none. The Nuba people suffered persecution at this level back in the 1990s. Humanitarian organizations say the same people who killed more than 500,000 people back then are trying to finish the job today. John Wagi, CBN News. Hollywood actor George Clooney is using his star power to shine the light on human rights abuses in Sudan. This week, Clooney and his father were arrested for protesting outside the country's embassy in Washington. That after a trip to Sudan to document attacks by the government against people living near the border of South Sudan. 
Testifying to Congress, he shared some of the victim's stories, including one about a boy who lost both hands during a bombing raid. He's urging lawmakers on Capitol Hill to increase pressure on the Muslim-dominated North to stop what he calls war crimes. In a one-on-one -on -one interview, Clooney told CBN News Christian ministries play a key role in helping those who are suffering. They lead the work a lot of times here. When we were at the Darfur rally, it was ministers. You know, it was it was a lot of uh, of people of faith that had been working very hard on this. So in some ways, I'm trying to uh, 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 honor whatever part I can in the hard work that they do because I'm a very I'm a big fan of it uh, of all of the work that's being done and people really put their hearts and souls in it. Clooney also met with President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Staying in Africa, a video exposing the crimes of Ugandan warlord Joseph Kony is continuing to spread, though it is getting some criticism. Kony 2012 has been viewed by about 80 million people on YouTube. Kony is the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, a group that terrorized northern Uganda and abducted as many as 30,000 children in the 90s and early 2000s. Some say Kony is no longer a threat to Uganda. He reportedly has been driven from the country and has only about 300 followers. Others say the video is doing a good thing by bringing awareness to the issue of child soldiers in Africa. And joining us now is Jesse Eves. He's a policy advisor for Children in Crisis with the Christian humanitarian group World Vision. Jesse, the film is highlight, highlights the abuses by Joseph Kony, but kids in many parts of Africa are the victims of conscription and exploitation. What can you tell us about this problem? Well, that's absolutely right. In fact, right now, uh, globally, there are about 250,000, a quarter million children who are actively serving as soldiers. And it's absolutely tragic in every single case. Uh, these, ca these children are not only used uh, as you know, soldiers carrying weapons, but they're also used as porters, they're used as human mind detectors, and the girls are most often used as sex slaves. Ah, oh, it's horrible. What types of trauma are these children experiencing? Well, if you take the case of the Lord's Resistance Army and what Joseph Kony has forced these children to do, they often abduct them at night and then force them to commit uh, terrible acts against their own family and friends and community. Uh, they basically force these kids to kill their mother or father, brothers and sisters, and then saying, okay, you are now one of us. You've killed your own family. Now your community hates you. You must join us now. And we saw this time and time again with close to 30,000 children, uh, specifically in the, in the LRA. And so the, the trauma that these children come through and then have to deal with in the aftermath is, is absolutely tragic. And it takes a, a comprehensive effort to try to bring them back and heal them both emotionally and physically. Oh, it's just heartbreaking to see those, those pictures. What can be done to help these victims cope with this trauma? Is there, can they ever recover? Actually, they can. Uh, World Vision, actually, in northern Uganda, has run a program called the Children of War Rehabilitation Center. And since about the mid-90s, uh, this center has served about 14,000 uh, abducted children, formerly abducted children and, and child soldiers. And in the center, they receive emotional, spiritual, and physical healing. Uh, they uh, are given an education. In some cases, uh, they'll receive vocational training. And then most importantly, uh, there's a, a ceremony of forgiveness. There's a forgiveness ritual that's held between their families and their communities. So these children who feel like they've committed horrible acts that can never be forgiven, forgiven uh, get to really understand uh, the power of, of Christ's love and forgiveness uh, as their family welcomes them back with open arms and they undergo a ceremony uh, where all is forgiven and they mm. only look towards the future and, and getting these children back to live a normal life. Oh my goodness, that is so powerful. The power of forgiveness, I can't imagine. Well, what, what can the international community do to, to stop this problem on a bigger scale as a whole? Right. Well, everyone has a direct role to play. I mean, with close to 100 million views of this video and awareness 
of this issue at an all-time high. Uh, what we're hoping is that all of this awareness will be transformed into direct action. Uh, we hope that this inspires millions of people to engage actively in serving developing communities around the world. And there are several ways to do that. Uh, first off, um, it's never been easier to communicate with our elected leaders, uh, either through social media or just picking up the phone and calling them. So if this is an issue that, that has impacted you in some way, if it's really touched your heart, you know, it's so easy to talk to your congressmen, to your senators, to the president, either through Facebook or Twitter or even just calling their offices and saying, I care about this issue. I want the U.S. to be involved. But also, it's not just, we shouldn't just rely on the government to, to do everything here. I mean, uh, each individual person plays a role. Mm -hmm. And um, that can include supporting uh, programs in the field, uh, supporting organizations like World Vision that are actively engaging uh, on this issue. And I think what's most important to remember is that clicking like on Facebook is not enough in this situation. <laughs> good uh, it's point, Jesse. absolutely critical to, yeah. to turn this awareness into direct action. All right, good point, Jesse. We appreciate World Vision and all you're doing. God bless you guys, and thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you so much. And you can add your voice to the millions of people who are speaking out against child exploitation and child soldiers. Post your thoughts and prayers to our CWN Facebook page. Mark? 50 human rights activists from around the world are calling on Pakistan to free Asiya Bibi. She's the imprisoned Christian mother sentenced to death for blasphemy. Several groups signed a petition this week at a UN Human Rights Summit. French journalist Anne-Isabelle Tolle was among the attendees urging Bibi's release. Asia Bibi is innocent. The Pakistani government knows it, but it does nothing for fear of reprisal. By refusing to act and to impose reforms, the Pakistani government becomes an accomplice of the fundamentalists. Asiya Bibi has been imprisoned for nearly three years. Her case is on appeal. CBN's Gary Lane met with her husband and daughters late last year, and they asked people to pray for her safe return home. Up next, meet an American missionary who risks his life in Rio's most dangerous slums and the gang leader who found salvation just days before his death. CWnews.org, your constant news source on the World Wide Web. Find daily updates on the global church. Watch the weekly broadcast. Three former presidents come together to honor the life and ministry. Also available in podcast. The in-depth insights into our reporter blogs. Taliban kidnapped at least 18 In South Korea, Korean Christians. Your Christian. online news source for complete coverage of the global church. In our world today, people say there are many paths to God because all religions are basically the same. Nothing could be further from the truth. Not all paths lead to the top of the mountain. While other religions require you to somehow work your way to heaven, the Christian faith is unique. Instead of us searching for God, we know that Jesus has been searching for us. He has completed the work needed for you to spend eternity with Him. In the quest for God, Gordon Robertson shows how you can overcome guilt, hear from God, and understand His plan for your life. Plus, learn what sets Christianity apart from all other religions. This powerful tool can help you share the gospel with those you care about the most. I want you to enjoy the security that comes from knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have favor with God forever. The Quest for God, available now. I love Gordon's style of teaching. He is very transparent in the examples that he gives. It really encouraged me to, to seek even more for God, to desire a more of a relationship with Him. The more you know about God, the more you know about Jesus, the more grace and peace you're going to get. The teaching has helped me see how much God loves His children and wants to bless them and to bless others around them. Everybody needs to watch this DVD. Welcome back. This next story comes to us from our friends at the International Missions Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. It's about an American missionary who spends his days ministering in the favelas, the slums of Brazil. More than 11 million people live in the midst of poverty and violence there. But Eric Reese is working to bring light to one of the darkest slums in Rio de Janeiro. What makes me love Rio is just seeing the hurting people 
in the communities like this. Just trying to survive. Just trying to pay the bills. Just trying to put food on the table. I see that every person here is a creation of God. And that when Christ went to the cross, he went to the cross for these people too. This is where Eric Reese works. He thinks often of the danger, knowing he might go out one day and not come back. And I wrote a letter to my wife. If I don't return, you be strong. Let my girls know that it's going to miss them. Ministry in the favelas is hard, even for the Brazilians. It's hard because the, 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 the Christian people here in Brazil, and I think in other countries, don't want to do the, this kind of job. They want to go to go to the streets at night to speak the, the, the Word of God, to preach the Word of God. They don't want, they want to stay in, the, in their big church, just watch uh, a good sermon. Yet the American couple continues reaching out to drug dealers, gang members, and prostitutes. Ramona Reese believes their own background helps them relate. From the way, from, from beginning, the way in which we grew up, to bring us to do what we're doing. It's not so hard for us to understand the people that we're ministering to. And so it's just trying to, trying to be minister to somebody who needs Jesus, who just so happens to be a, a drug trafficker or, you know, a militia or whatever. Reese and his family came to Brazil 13 years ago as Southern Baptist missionaries from Albany, Georgia. His greatest challenge? Gaining the confidence of a top favela gang leader, the Godfather. One night, the man agreed to an interview in a secret location. The Godfather, who originally wanted to kill Reese, now spoke well of the missionary. He was a person who came to the community and helped the community, which has many needs, financial needs. He didn't come to help with the financial needs, but to bring the peace that many need. Shortly after the interview, a rival gang assassinated the Godfather, but not before he put his faith in Jesus Christ. I will not hold back into a comfort zone from my comfort level, shorten the hand of Christ, shorten the hand of God. When people are dying, going to hell, needing to know there's a way their life can be changed and changed radically, I will not do it. Reese now finds help from a Brazilian pastor with a favela background. I tried to steal a car. When I looked behind, there was a police car. They started shooting at us, and one of these shots caught me here. My mother had always told me that even if it were the last minute of my life, if I repented, God would forgive me of my sins. And that time had come. I started a new life with Jesus. The grace of God has brought that guy not from near death, shootings, to now a beautiful family, a lovely wife, awesome kids. Only the grace of God could do that. Ramona Reese supports her husband in ministry. She befriends other women, including Vivian, a single mother and former prostitute. When that relationship has been established and the Holy Spirit does his, his work and that person receives Christ, and, and I can actually see them be, being baptized and seeing them joining a church. That's the greatest. That's the biggest reward. And as the Reese's deal with the daily challenges of work in the favelas, people like Vivian remind them why they came in the first place. Stan Jeter, CBN News. Coming up, one year ago, the sea brought death and destruction to Japan, including those who make their living on the water. Today they're back with a little help from some Christian friends. We asked CBN.com users how we could make our website easier to use, and we listen. This is really easy to read and move through. The information opens up a whole lot quicker. Yeah, yeah it's much faster. There's everything I'm interested in right here. 
with the click of a mouse. The new CBN.com has been redesigned, making it faster to find your favorite 700 Club stories, musical guests, or online community with special features. Anyone can enjoy this new site. Visit the new CBN.com today. From the ancient Greeks and Mayas to the world religions of today, Millions of people have been on a quest for God. But from the very beginning of time, God has been searching for you. Jesus says, I'll do it for you. I'll come to you. You won't have to come to me. I'm going to come to you. In this new DVD, The Quest for God, Gordon Robertson shows you how to hear from God and find his unique plan for your life. So it's more than just looking at him in a book or hearing about him from somebody else. He wants to have a direct relationship with you. Plus, learn what sets Christianity apart from all other religions. It's by grace, the free, unmerited grace of God. He is able to present you spotless in His presence with exceeding joy. Get the Quest for God, available now. In our world today, people say there are many paths to God because all religions are basically the same. Nothing could be further from the truth. Not all paths lead to the top of the mountain. In The Quest for God, Gordon Robertson shows how you can overcome guilt, hear from God, and understand His plan for your life. Plus, learn what sets Christianity apart from all other religions. The Quest for God, available now. Well, in just moments, people in Japan had their world turned upside down about a year ago. That's right, when they were hit with the largest earthquake in their history and a devastating tsunami. But Operation Blessing has been on the scene to help people get back to work and restore their lives. George Thomas has the story from Japan. <laughs> There's something about his smile and his laugh that warms the heart. Perhaps it's because at 75, Kiyoshige Chiba has survived the most difficult year of his life. Did you ever think that this is too much? I've lost my boat, I've lost my livelihood, I'm not making any money. Did you ever think, wow, this is enough, I can't take it anymore? Yes, I felt like giving up. Not anymore. Kiyoshige and 10 other fishermen, whose way of life were ruined a year ago, are back on their feet. I was really surprised because I was given something that I wasn't expecting. 10 new fishing boats donated by Operation Blessing to this village that saw nearly all its boats destroyed by the tsunami. These boats represent two things for the fishermen here. First of all, they're restoring the livelihood, which is so important to help these communities get back on their feet. And secondly, the boats represent hope, hope for the future. That hope was robbed one year ago when a massive earthquake and resulting tsunami devastated Japan's northeast coast. Small fishing villages like this one took the brunt of the devastation. Our main industry in this town depends on fishing. Before the tsunami, the fishing industry here was flourishing, but in the tsunami, most of the boats were lost. The companies that manufacture boats in Japan have simply been overwhelmed by the demand for new boats. So Operation Blessing got creative, turning to Stacy Raymond, a boat builder from Maine, to custom design boats for Japanese fishermen. They have a very specific uh, design criteria to their fishing, and uh, that required us to actually design these boats from the ground up. Operation Blessing has commissioned 10 more boats, bringing much-needed economic relief for Raymond's business back in Maine. This was an important project for us. Uh, it allowed us to feed our people in the States, keep our employees going. And uh, at the same time, uh, you know, help the Japanese out. It was a win-win situation. This past Saturday, Raymond joined Operation Blessing and representatives from the software company SAP that sponsored the first 10 boats in presenting the new vessels to the fishermen. The new boat could not have come at a better time for Kiyoshigashiba. Because for the last 12 months, he has had no boat, has had no income, and in fact, he's been telling me that he's had to dip into his savings to, uh, to, to just, in, excess, in essence, survive. With this boat, I'll be able to fish for valuable seafood closer to the shore, such as shellfish, oysters, and nice varieties of fish. Hosho Mara, what does this mean to you in Japanese? 
He's named the boat Victoria's Treasure. When I heard that I was going to be receiving a boat, it gave me huge motivation to go back to fishing. It was a huge help, so thank you very much. Hey. Operation Blessing was on the scene days after the earthquake, providing more than 100 tons of emergency supplies to families in need. 12 months on, they are still here, helping to rebuild. Dark says that whether it's providing prescription eyeglasses to those who lost theirs in the tsunami, or whose eyesight has worsened since then, to giving fishermen the tools and equipment to get their businesses back up and running, Operation Blessing is here for the long haul. The fact that Operation Blessing is here one year later after the tsunami is testament to our commitment for long-term solutions to these disasters here in Japan and around the world. And so Operation Blessing isn't just a one hit, we're in, we're out. We're here committed to serving and having an impact in these communities. George Thomas, CBN News, Kesanuma, Japan. Thanks, George. And for daily stories about the work of the church around the globe, you can check out our Christian World News webpage. You find it at cwnews.org. We'll be right back. In our world today, people say there are many paths to God because all religions are basically the same. Nothing could be further from the truth. Not all paths lead to the top of the mountain. While other religions require you to somehow work your way to heaven, the Christian faith is unique. Instead of us searching for God, we know that Jesus has been searching for us. He has completed the work needed for you to spend eternity with Him. In the quest for God, Gordon Robertson shows how you can overcome guilt, hear from God, and understand His plan for your life. Plus, learn what sets Christianity apart from all other religions. This powerful tool can help you share the gospel with those you care about the most. I want you to enjoy the security that comes from knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have favor with God forever. The Quest for God, available now. I love Gordon's style of teaching. He is very transparent in the examples that he gives. It really encouraged me to, to seek even more for God, to desire a more of a relationship with Him. The more you know about God, the more you know about Jesus, the more grace and peace you're going to get. The teaching has helped me see how much God loves His children and wants to bless them and to bless others around them. Everybody needs to watch this DVD. Christian World News, your window to the global church for stories of revival. revival. Persecution. Funeral, relatives and fellow Christians born in the first country over the international day I'm George line. Thomas in Baghdad and coming up on the broadcast an exclusive interview. And the impact of Christian leaders. Watch Christian World News. CBN is working to purify water in villages near the capital of India. Yeah, law prohibits well drilling in the area because the water table is already low. But the need for clean drinking water is high. So CBN is working to distribute water purifiers. So far, more than 450 have been handed out. Villagers were also taught about good hygiene. And the host of a local CBN TV program visited residents and offered a message of encouragement. I'll tell you what, CBN is just, just doing incredible work all around the world. I, know, I love that story from Japan. Mm -hmm. The fisherman was so happy to have his boat back yeah. and called it victorious, you know. That's right. That's wonderful. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. Until next week, from all of us here at Christian World News, goodbye and God bless you.